Hi there, let's cover working in three dimensions. This is gonna cover volume for the most part. Um, so what do I mean by a three-dimensional object? It's something you could hold, you could potentially fill up with something, it could be a box, it could be, it, um, it's not something that you would have drawn on a piece of paper. Um, it's truly something that has a length, a width, a height, it actually has volume to it. And then what do we mean by the volume of a three-dimensional object? Well, the volume is just what it can hold. You know, how much the item can hold is what the volume is representing. So if it's a glass, the volume is how much liquid can it hold? Um, if it's a box, how much can it, you know, how much space is inside the box to be able to fill up? So what units are used to measure volume? So we've talked about, we've talked about squares before and, and circles, and those are, you know, if we're talking about the, the measurement around something, it's the just feet or inches and things like that. If we talk about area, remember that's always measured in squares, okay? But now we're talking about volume. And anytime they're asking about volume or how much something can hold, that answer is always going to be in cubes. It's all, always going to be cubic. So it could be uh, cubic feet, feet cubed. It could be written either way. Um, and then the, the portion where it has the feet can be interchanged with anything. It could be inches cubed. It could be centimeters cubed. Um, it could be, gosh, anything, meters cubed. All of that works for volume. Volume is always measured in cubes. So you're going to need to have access to this uh, information when you're taking your test. So make sure that you've got uh, a, a good notes on your, your volume formulas. Okay, for a cube, the I know they've got a bunch here. I'd say the volume of a cube is just the length of one of the sides of the cubed and cubed. Okay, um, for, a for a rectangular prism, it's just length times width times height. For a pyramid, length times width times height divided by three. Cylinder, which is like a, a can, like a, a canned good. Um, pi r squared h is the volume and the R is the radius, the H is your height. And then for a cone, it's a third of the volume of a cylinder. So it's pi R square H divided by three. One of the things you need to understand also, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Um, hmm, no turn. All right, so volume of the sphere is the last one and that's just four thirds pi R cubed. So let's find the volume of the shape below. So what is this? I don't know why I got rid of my, my notes here. Got too much paper. All right, so I want to be able to show you. So a pyramid is what we're looking at, okay? So a pyramid is the volume is length times width times height divided by three. So the volume, the length is, it could be three inches, the width is four inches and the height, oh, good Lord, I can't read this. Let's see if I can see it on here, eight inches. And all of that divided by three. So that's gonna be 32. So the volume is 32 inches cubed. And no, it's inches cubed because inch times inch times inch is inches cubed. Pardon me, goodness. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this almost looks like a coin. Um, it could easily be, except for it's not seven foot and with a radius, but this is gonna be a cylinder, all right? A cylinder is going to have, it's gonna be round and it's gonna have some height to it, all right? So the volume for a cylinder, <coughs> goodness, is pi r square h. So volume is pi r square h. So volume is pi. Remember to use your pi symbol on your calculator, not 3.14. The radius is seven feet. So you're not having to find out what that is. Be careful because there's a very good chance that on my exam, I could actually get, provide you the diameter and you would have to find the radius in order to solve this problem. And then the height is one foot. 
Okay, so I'm going to take my calculator. Seven squared is just seven with a little hoo hoo and the little carrot and then squared, which is 49. So we've got pi times 49 feet squared times one foot. I haven't removed the one foot. I know one times anything is itself, but I want to make sure that the foot representation is there because foot squared times foot is foot cubed. And you need to understand that volume is measured in cubes. So I'm just going to take my pi times 49 is 153.93. And it says approximate form rounded to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to go to nine, four. Okay. 153.94. feet cubed is the volume. Cool. This is a you try it, but I'm going to go ahead and, and do this one because you need to make sure you understand the spheres. So determine the volume of a sphere with radius of six foot. Write your answer in approximate form, round it to the nearest hundredth. Be sure to include units in your answer and of course a sentence for me. Okay. So We've got a sphere, a sphere is just a ball, all right? I can't draw a ball, but I, I'll do my darndest to do a faux ball, there we go. And it says the radius is six feet, the heck of a big ball, all right? So what's the volume for a sphere? Well, that's not it, let's start up here. Four thirds pi r cubed. The other way to write this, which I find students do better with, um, is to do instead four pi r cubed divided by three. Less mistakes are made whenever you do it using this formula versus this one. I promise you, I've seen it too many times. So we've got the volume is equal to four pi. The radius is six feet. That's going to be cubed. And all of that is divided by three. So I'm going to start with order of operations. I'm going to start with my six cubed. So six uh, caret or y to the x, uh, three and equals is 216. I'm going to take that 216 times four times pi and divide it by three. So 904.5. How far are we going to? Hundredth. 904.78. That's an eight. Feet cubed is the volume. All right. That's it. That's all I have for volume. Y'all have a great day. Catch you soon.